thank you for joining our session. I'm Lucia Webster. I work in the Government Grants Management Function, which is part of the Cabinet Office, and I'm the Delivery Director on the Grants Applicant Programme, or GAP. With me is my colleague, who I will ask to introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Dale Murray and I work for Anne Digital and I'm working with the Government Grants Management Function as the GAP Delivery Manager. Thanks Dale. We're here today to talk to you about the agile development of GAP and focus on our approach to co-design. GAP is comprised of two digital services, find a grant and apply for a grant. Find a grant is now live in public beta, so we'll talk mostly about that and Dale will do a demonstration shortly of what the service looks like. GAP is building and testing a digital one-stop shop for government grants. Grants account for almost a quarter of government spending, and a large amount of that is available to a whole range of organisations and individuals. The problem is that many people don't know these grants exist or how to access them. Nobody can be expected to know what each government department does, so our pilot service is testing the concept of a single digital place to find and apply for government grants. It really is a no brainer, but trust me, it's not as easy as it sounds. GAP is a shared outcomes fund project, one of a group of projects funded by HM Treasury with the aim of improving outcomes through cross government working. This puts the needs of citizens at the heart of the development so it's very aligned to Agile methodology, which is led by user needs. Our objectives therefore start with the grant applicants rather than government departments. And we're aiming to make things simpler, faster and fairer, as we know how resource intensive it is, particularly for smaller community-based organisations. We did some baseline research and found on average, it takes an organisation 54 hours to find or apply for a grant and cost them nearly a thousand pounds. There are additional costs like access to commercial grant databases, which can cost up to five thousand pounds a year. Users therefore tell us that the current system favours large organisations and exists recipients of grants who have the resources to apply for them. So we're co-designing with them to create a service that is accessible to all. Our main target user groups for GAP are the VCSE and SME sectors on the basis that if we build services which meet their needs, they will also meet the needs of larger organisations who have the greater resources. This was also to focus on the government's levelling up agenda and look at how we can increase fairness so that the finite amount of grant funding did not keep going back to the same suspects. We want to build a service which means that a small community based organisation in the Outer Hebrides has the same chance of finding a grant as a large corporation based in London. So I think that a key success factor for us has been avoiding the low hanging fruit or those users with the resources to engage with us and choosing instead the harder to reach sectors. We could have achieved a good volume of grant applicants and amounts awarded by looking to those bigger organisations. But that would have never answered the exam question of how can we make grants fairer. The business case which led to GAP estimated that almost a billion pounds is spent by charities just in the process of obtaining grant funding. And that money should be going instead to delivering the outcomes for citizens that those organisations specialise in. We also need to make the services right for grant administrators who equally face resource constraints and want digital services which help them to get good applications and information which will enable them to make robust funding decisions for the best outcomes. So we have undertaken extensive user research, far more than would normally be carried out, so that we could fully understand our users' needs. The good news is we found no surprises in these fundamental needs, but the depth and breadth of research we did gave us, and continues to give us, rich information on how to meet them. I'll talk a bit more about our approach to user research before passing to Dale to talk about the product and demonstrate Find a Grant to you. We were determined that user research would not be a tick box exercise, but that we would genuinely co-create services with users. 
We would do that by making sure the program management and digital delivery parts of the team worked closely together, and especially that the comms efforts were directed to feeding the user researchers with willing subjects who would tell us what they need and test the developing services. And I must admit, I, th I thought it would be hard to get the level of engagement that we hoped for. But we set up a grants community of interest just before Christmas. And instead of the 30 or so people I expected, we currently have 660 and over 530 of those have volunteered for user research. This tells me the service is needed because however good your networks, people don't have the time to engage with something they don't believe in. I won't lie, maintaining this level of engagement is hard work, but more than that, it's an incredible gift to any agile digital development. Every single functionality and term used in our services has been co-designed with and tested by users. That represents a huge investment on their part. It's not their day job, and it's something we're very grateful for. It also means that we have a better chance of building services which are sustainable and ultimately that the business case to roll this out to government at the end of the pilot will be successful. Inclusion in the widest sense has also been key to our co-creation approach. Like any government service, we follow WCAG guidelines on accessibility. And we also chose to go through an external accessibility audit to make sure that we were going for the highest possible standards. We also recruited people with different disabilities to test the services and mark our homework as we've developed the service. Although we're engaging with local authorities and involved administrations, our contribution to the levelling up agenda is also about more than just regional distribution of grants. We're involved with the government's diversity task force where members from the BAME disability community and women's groups come together to discuss how to improve inclusive access to government funding. The other aspect is around digital inclusion, and we've carried out a digital inclusion survey to our community of interest members to establish the levels of digital capability amongst our users and ways in which we can make the service even more accessible. So with this level of engagement comes the responsibility to listen and take on board the design advice and feedback offered by users and where it's not feasible to do so, we go back to our users and explain why. A lot of the things that users have asked for are out of the scope of the pilot, but have been parked in the backlog for when services hopefully move on from being just a pilot. So that being said, I'll now ask Dale to talk you through the product and show you the live Find a Grant service. Over to Dale. Thank you, Lucia. Before I move on and show the live service, I'll take you through how we've used that user research to infer the product features that we've developed. As Lucia has mentioned, user research has been at the heart of our delivery framework to ensure that we're truly building a service which makes grant funding simpler, faster and fairer. Through our research and co-creation activities, we aim to understand whether a single go-to place to find and apply for grant funding is beneficial for both grant admins and grant applicants. Delivering a public service in the timescales we have is no easy feat, but we wanted to ensure that we were building a service that improved the experience of our target user groups through the, these extensive user research and co-creation methods. Our initial discovery aimed to understand the specific problems to be solved by our grant applicant and um, by the grant applicant program for voluntary community and social enterprise organisations and small to medium enterprises. To help us understand our key stakeholders and organisations involved, we initially created an ecosystem map to visualise an overview of the main participants in the grant funding landscape. This was used to identify main areas of user research, business analysis and service design as a focus for further co-creation activities. This shared understanding helped focus our agile delivery team through our research due to the mass scale of complexity within grant funding. We devised proto personas from our own assumptions and to really outline the motivation and challenges prospective grant applicants and grant admins using our service would face. This allowed our team to develop a deep empathy with both applicants and admins, providing a useful starting point for early designs for our ideal target users. From our government grants community of interest, 
um, which over 660 members, which is an amazing number, we conducted a mixture of one-to-one -one interview and focus group to give us real deep insights to what was going well, but also new opportunities to improve the overall experience and reduce barriers in grant funding. For those who we did not have the opportunity to speak with, we were able to gather their insights through quantitative research methods such as surveys. During user research, our participants referenced existing applications that they had struggled with, but also ones they had liked. So this gave us an opportunity to deep dive into existing processes to help understand and empathize with current experiences to under uncover improvements based on usability principles, capturing the journey flows and overall satisfaction of the user. Through our user research and co-creation, we were able to identify and define key problem areas to focus on. We chose to focus on four key problem statements that really stood out to us during this research. The complexity of the grant process, there are multiple different sources to find and apply for grant funding with a lack of consistency, which made it difficult for applicants to effectively uh, and efficiently apply for funding. The user experience highlighted that both grant admins and applicants um, had challenges when applying for funding. Some examples being accessibility issues, losing progress, but also duplication of information that they had to supply over and over again. The quality of opportunity really stood out where smaller organizations lack dedicated resources to compete for funding. And this lack of confidence um, meant that they didn't uh, utilize the opportunities that as effectively as they possibly could, as well as a lack of transparency. So limited reporting and inconsistencies with grant data across the department and having the ability to use that data to really inform policy. We collated this research into a jobs to be done framework, which turned our insights into real needs for our users. And this covered not only the functional aspects of our service, but also the emotional, personal, personal and social dimensions as well. Again, putting the user at the heart of everything that we do. It allowed us to understand the real drivers for our service and helped us reframe our needs from applicants who are using the service to apply for grants to applicants are using our service to get vital funding to deliver impact. This real deep understanding of our users allowed us to ideate and understand how might we help solve the problems our users face. From our how might we statements, we began to develop concepts and hypotheses that would then allow us to experiment with our target user groups to, to co-create the service further. Using the GovUK prototype toolkit, we were able to quickly prototype our concepts and get feedback from our community of interest. From this prototyping and testing, we were able to walk our users through our ideas and understand what they liked and what they didn't like. Our team used then techniques such as infinity sorting and rainbow sheets to cluster these insights, identify patterns and reveal new ideas to take forward and build the service. This has led us to our initial finding grant development. To meet the needs of our target user groups, we focused on three key features for find a grant. Creating a single go-to place to find the government grants, the ability to search and filter on grants to match user criteria, and the ability to opt in for notifications for a grant. By focusing on these features, we simplify the applicant's experience by providing that single go-to place to find all government grants. It allows applicants to find new grants applicable to quickly save time and money whilst giving them the opportunity to secure funding for their organisations. Furthermore, our notifications feature will proactively alert users and attract them back to our service so that no opportunity goes missed. And then for grant admins, our service allows them to communicate their opportunities widely, maximising reach and impact. So what I will do now is share with you the live service and take you through a little walkthrough. So here we have the live service for Find a Grant. On the start page, you can see here clear guidance on what the service does and the fact that it's a pilot service and that it's being co-created with our users. We then have two clear call to actions from this page. The first one being for those users who understand what type of grants they're looking for so that they can search keywords and 
retrieve a list of all grants that match those keywords. The second being for those who might not know the keywords that they're looking for, and they just want to see a list of all available grants. When I go to the grants list page, we can see the number of grants that have been returned from the service, as well as that keyword search feature to allow them to filter down into the grants um, that are available to them. For each grant that we have on the service, we have key information as a summary to give users a quick insight to whether that grant might be applicable to them. Again, the research that's been displayed, sorry, the, again, the information that is available here is based on research that we've conducted um, to help users identify grants more quickly. If I click on the link to the grant, then we get the detailed view for that grant, which provides us with more information um, given the user the context, eligibility, key dates that they need to make that informed decision on whether that grant is applicable to them. With another clear call to action on this page, you can start a new application by clicking this button, which will then take you through the application process for each grant. You can also sign up for notifications, which will allow the user to supply their email address and receive notifications when any of this grant information changes, but also updates approaching the closing date to proactively remind them about applying for this grant. If I take you back to the list view, on the left hand side, we do have other filter options, which will allow users to narrow down their search and quickly find grants. These options, again, came out of the user research activities that we conducted, understanding what was a priority for the users when they were filtering for grant information. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we also have another notification feature at the moment, which will allow users to subscribe to notifications for new grants. This will allow the user to again supply their email address and they will receive a weekly update of any new opportunities or in the form of grants that have been added to the service, emailed directly to their inbox. At the moment, th these are the key features that we have for Find a Grant, but we are continually evolving the service and bringing on new features that covers the full end-to-end -end journey of both finding and applying for grants. I'll pass you back to Lucia that will take you over the objectives and goals for the service. Thanks very much, Dale. And the services that Dale's been describing are, are to meet six business goals, which were set in the original business case that I mentioned earlier. That's about improving overall user experience, saving time and cost for applicants, saving time and cost for government, improving the regional distribution of spend in line with the leveling up agenda, increasing competition and quality of applications, and reducing fraud and error. If users can find and apply for grants more easily and cheaply, they'll be more inclined to try, which will drive up competition. This means that grant admins get a better selection of applications to evaluate and make awards based on outcomes rather than just who is better at the process. Critically, we're also integrating with Spotlight, which is the grant functions due diligence tool. That will help grant administrators to detect and prevent fraud, making sure that the taxpayer gets better value for money and the right organisations are funded. So for the rest of this year, as we develop the services, we'll also be evaluating them against these business goals. Based on that evaluation and the continuing feedback from our users, we'll submit a business case for GAP to be rolled out across government for all eligible grants and truly become a one-stop shop, which will make grants simpler, faster and fairer. So if anyone watching this manages a government funded grant, whether you're in a department, ALB, local authority or any public body, please do get in touch as we would love to advertise your grants on Find a Grant. And it's free, which is not something you hear very often here. So to wrap up, if you're watching this at 2 p.m. on the 23rd of June, Dale and I are both online and ready to take questions. If you're watching on demand, then we'll get back to you as soon as we can.
Thank you again for listening and goodbye.